Uh, right, okay, so we are changing the fuse rod today. Um, we're putting a fuse box 14 way in, uh, and we're taking out uh, an old plastic uh, consumer unit, which, which has got an RCD protection, but it's only got one RCD. Um, and because the building's deemed as high risk because it's got a thatched roof on it, uh, we've advised our client to put AFDDs on the sockets as well, so as is a high risk property. So. Okay, so this is the board we're taking out. Um, so it's got an RCD there and an RCD there, but with RCDs, when they're in line with each other, they'll both trip out, so one of them's re uh, useless, basically. Um, so we're gonna take this fuse box out and we're gonna put a 14-way fuse box in with RCBOs and AFDDs. Uh, it's always preferred method because with the single RCD protection, if you have a fault on uh, any one circuit, you lose 100% of the house, which doesn't really make it for a safe environment. So with the RCBO boards, the fault is only uh, restricted to that singular circuit. All right, so the board we're putting in is uh, the fuse box 15 way. I did call it a 40 way earlier on, but that's because uh, on the old fuse board boxes, you used to have a circuit breaker for the SPD. Um, now they've modified the board, they've changed the SPD uh, from an orange one to a pink one, um, and they've removed the MCB, which is awesome. Uh, gives us an extra way, so uh, we can get more bang for our buck. Um, another thing they've changed, which I really do like on these fuse boards, is the grommet strip. Um, this is the metal backed stuff, uh, which means it's, it holds its shape better, it's more rigid, uh, it can get knocked about a lot more before it actually comes off. So, fuse box, well done. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, I like all the upgrades. So, thank you very much. Right, okay, so we're gonna start by stripping the cabinet down, uh, taking the door off, because we don't want it in our way. Uh, we're gonna go and safely isolate the power. Uh, luckily, outside by the main head, uh, when they've done a meter upgrade, they have put in a double pole isolation switch for us. So we don't need to uh, <coughs> cut the seals um, and pull the fuse. So, uh, not that we do do that, but yeah. So, uh, and then, yeah, then we'll start stripping this down, marking all the cables up so we know where they go, and then we'll stick our new one in. So, okay, so we're going to prep the fuse box. Uh, we're gonna, we've done some knockouts on the back. Uh, we're gonna put the grommet strip on uh, and then all of these RCBOs and AFDDs, we're gonna stick on here. Um, and then we're gonna have a couple of spare ways for expansion. Um, I don't think I'm gonna hit the 30% as per the regs, but with the restrictions on space that we've got, uh, we can only do what we can do, so. So there's the grommet strip all put in, all nice and snug. And we didn't have to cut anything off. So fuse box have figured out exactly the right length. So you just come along and slap it in. So well done. Okay, so with the grommet strips in, we're now gonna start uh, fitting the RCBOs to the board. Um, what we do is we keep the highest breaker closest to the main switch and the lowest breaker at the furthest point. Uh, and then any spares will be located in the center. Okay, so we've got all the RCBOs in. We're now going to take all this rat's nest, uh, make it look a little bit more presentable, get them all connected in. Um, we're going to make sure that when we do things up, we're going to use a torque driver, because uh, the NIC uh, do actually pull you up on things like this. Because uh, I got I, I got flagged up for it a couple of years ago, because uh, I just honestly said, nope, don't use a torque screwdriver. And now it's like, nope, you need to. Um, so... Uh, because we're part of the NIC and we do what they tell us to do, we use a torque screwdriver. So, uh, on the breakers, it will say, I don't know if you can see on there. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, 2.5 on the breaker. Uh, we've got uh, 1.2 on the top of the RCBO. Uh, and we've got 2 on the buzz bar. So, just make sure you adjust your torque driver to suit because uh, otherwise you'll over torque although really i think these are like placebos really but that's my opinion and we were always entitled to those uh right okay i won't put the buzz bar in yet because i always leave it out so i can access these screws at the bottom 
when I come to Mount of Fury's ball. So. All right, so there's our old ball. Uh, 60 amp head with 16 mil tails, which is fine. Um, we've got to try and reroute this back into the board. Uh, we don't basically want uh, a second RCD on a circuit that's already got an RCD. So that's for the bath upstairs. Um, we've got multiple lighting circuits in the circuit breaker. It's not a bad thing. Um, I'm going to try and split them up. But from my experience, sometimes when you have multiple cores in a circuit breaker, you can guarantee that somewhere in the field, the neutrals will be connected together, um, which means that uh, we can try and split them, but they might cause two RCBOs to trip, which means we'll have to put the pairs back together again because we'll have a thing known as cross neutrals. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna strip this bad boy down, offer up our new one, make any alterations to the back plate and then we're going to mount our new fuse board and start second fixing uh, right so before we start to tear it all to pieces what we want to do is just quickly just make some kind of marker which we understand um so when we do strip this board down we know kind of what's what so what i personally do is i just put a, a black mark on my on my rings on my 2.5s so I know they go together um, and then when I've got lights doubled up I do exactly the same thing now I know that with a 1 1.5 it's a lighting circuit with a 2.5 it's a socket circuit um, and then uh, yeah all the other bits and pieces we know what they what they are so we don't need any visual rec uh, visual marking to to help us when we come to install the board Okay, so the fuse board's out. So what I'm going to do quickly is all of those lighting circuits, which were doubled up, uh, I'm basically, so these ones here, uh, I'm basically going to find the ones with the same markings on, and then I'm going to identify the neutrals. And what I'm going to do is basically a continuity test between those two neutrals. Um, because everything's now disconnected from Earth, uh, we've got no return path on the neutral side, because uh, the neutral is commonly connected to earth. Um, so yeah, so if there's a connection inside the circuit, then we'll get continuity between the two neutrals. Uh, if there's not, then we won't, which means we can then divide those circuits over two RCBOs instead of having them doubled up on one. Okay, so what we're going to do very quickly is a little test on these two lighting circuits, which share the same RCBO. Uh, we're going to test to see if the neutrals are connected in the field. If they are, then those two circuits stay in the same RCBO. If they're not, then we're going to put them into two separate RCBOs. So these two neutral here are the neutrals that we're going to use. Um, so what we're going to do is just very quickly null our meter. So that's the reading on our leads. So we're going to zero that out, just like so. And then we are going to connect you on there and connect you on there. Right, okay, so because that's come back with no continuity reading, that tells me that these two neutrals do not interact with each other out in the field, which means if we put them into two separate RCBOs, they then won't cause an issue with each other. So, uh, what I'll do quickly is just test the live side. And yeah, so they've got no reason to interact with each other on separate RCBOs. So those two can go into their own circuit. Uh, what we're gonna do now uh, is test the other lighting circuits just to confirm that they're fine. Uh, and we're also going to go through and we're going to test the ring continuity on uh, our ring final circuit. Um, so here's one of them. So we're going to slap that on there. Now on this, we want to have continuity. Right. All right. So, so we've got 0 0.48, which is great. So when we come to test the earth, because uh, oh, unfortunately, the earths are dub uh, uh, so they're double sleeved in an earth, uh, or they're double earthed in a sleeve, should I say? So we've got to take the sleeve off, 
separate the Earths and then do a continuity test on that. Because we had 0 0.47 on that, uh, our target range is around about 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Um, the reason for that is the earthen conductor is smaller than the uh, line conductor, which means it will have a higher resistance value. Um, if it's got a lower resistance value, then it may warrant further investigation, but it, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, so we're gonna do all of these tests to uh, the lights and the sockets, um, and we're gonna test the continuity loops on the neutrals as well, um, and then we can start connecting this. So, or man, the fuse wall at least. All right, so we've gone through and tested all of our ring finals. They're all well and good. Um, and as I suspected, we have got a lighting circuit, which uh, has got continuity on it. There we go. Now that's on the red, so that tells me that the lives somewhere interact in the junction box. Uh, the neutrals are open, but the lives are connected. Um, it's not an issue. All we've got to do is just make sure that as they're part of the same circuit, they go on the same RCBI, and that's it. Sorry. Okay, so all dead tests are done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this marked area out because that's gonna be the entry point for our cables to the back of our fuse board. Um, we're fine on the left, down and across the bottom. Uh, it's a little bit touchy going up the side and it's really like, we've got to be really careful coming across this line because that's where the cables are. And the last thing we want to do is to catch the cables uh, with the multi-tool because the multi-tool is not very forgiving when it comes to PVC. All right, so our hole's cut. Uh, we're now gonna split all of these cables up into two bunches. Because uh, we've got two entry holes, we're gonna basically load one side up with lights uh, and uh, the two 20 amp circuits, and then the other side's gonna have the mains feed, uh, sockets, and the cooker circuit. Uh, we're gonna tap them together, because it makes it easy when we pull them through the holes, so. Right, so these are segregated into two bunches now, it just makes it easier to put them into the fuse board. Uh, so we're gonna feed these in, get the fuse board mounted, and get that secured back to the wall. All right, so fuse board's done. Uh, took a little bit longer than what I was hoping it would take, um, but it's not a lot of room, and the cables uh, were just about long enough, uh, apart from the blacks. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a perspective fault current test uh, on the fuse board. So to do that, we're gonna connect our clamp to our earth terminal when it goes on there, just like that. Uh, and then we're gonna set our tester to uh, too high, because there's no RCD on the circuit. Uh, and then we're gonna put our probe on the live terminal. So that's come up 240 volts, which is within parameters. And then our reading has come up as uh, 986 amps, which is fine, because uh, the uh, maximum current rating of these devices is 6,000 amps. Um, and the uh, external impedance is 0 0.23, which is acceptable for a TNCS system. All right, so uh, that's that fuse board done. Uh, what we're gonna do now is gonna basically go around and uh, take some live test results uh, at the end of the circuits on the lighting circuits and at multiple points on all the socket circuits. Uh, we're gonna mark the fuse board up and then we're gonna sign it off and do a installation certificate uh, and we'll amend the EICR to so it's satisfactory uh, and give the client the two certificates. <sighs> All right, so cupboard door back on, fuse board fits like a dream. Um, yeah, worked out really well. So there we go. Now go and check on and see what Tony got up to.